first of all, you know, thanks Sue for giving the very brief but high level introduction about uh, the business proposal. And I'm here, so before I start our my presentation, maybe I can give, uh, give you a little background about this training session as well as the summer contest. Because I think I, I heard a late young lady came to me, she was confused about uh, the program and the IOF. And we will have a more introduction, you know, in more information about this organization and the committee during lunchtime. So before that, so I'll just give you a, a quick, quick uh, brief description about the contest. The contest actually is for the summer and deadline for your business plan is August 31st. This contest is uh, basically run by IOF, International Leadership Foundation, and under this foundation we have this uh, called uh, Entrepreneur Innovation Committee. Entrepreneur Innovation Committee is the uh, driving force for this summer contest. So I don't know, I don't know where did you get the information, you know, for today's training session. But in that flyer, we list uh, the contest and we list uh, the website. Website. This is our contest official website, and all the detailed information you should be able to see in this website. We have a committee member of uh, nine people from various. Uh, uh, business industry and some of them are entrepreneur their own VC investors some of them are, they're basically are just leaders from a, a different area and what I'm going to do is uh, I probably will dive in more detail than Sue's overview so I'll give you a more uh, dry stuff which could be boring but keep that in mind it could be a pretty useful and after my session, I will have a two quiz. The winner of the, uh, you know, whoever can answer my questions, you'll get some treat, all right? <laughs> all right. And my name is Nina Wang. I'm a Vice President and General Counsel of Green Core Capital Inc. So this is me. Um, this building actually is a Green Core building. We bought three warehouses and built this office building. So oftentimes we use the site, use this office and weekend to uh, run classes like this. So your organization, if you want to have some classes during the weekends, definitely can contact us, you know, trainees, whatever, supposedly, okay? So my background, I'm a tax lawyer and also a, a CPA. So I have been working for IBM, Lockheed Martin, Computer Science Corporation and uh, a law firm, Salary and Priest, as well as a Deloitte Touche. That was my first job. So I'm being all my career, and right now I'm head of uh, Green Core Capital Inc. is uh, a real estate investment and asset management company. Um, so my whole career, actually, you know, it's my career is <laughs> ago. I'm a tax lawyer and a CPA, and I have been doing a lot of uh, cross-border merge acquisition. So that's my, my field. And so today, what I'm going to uh, give you a um, topic, what I'm planning to do is uh, you know, build your business plan, the part one. Part two is the business formation. And part three, I'm talking about just briefly financial operation. And then the part four, how to manage your business, All right? So build your business plan. This actually is what we're asking for for the summer. And for, for you, some of you have already uh, decided you're going to participate in this business, uh, this summer's competition or contest. And for those of you who have not decided, and uh, if you don't have time to meet the deadline, uh, August 31st, don't worry about it. You know, we, we'll do this continuing. Next summer, we'll continue to do this. So this year, it's good you learn something to build your business plan, and next year, you can use it. Um, Sue has already touched with a lot of uh, aspects of the business proposal. So what I'm here, I'm not going to do the, a deep, but you can find lots of information online. So what I'm doing is here, just give you this, uh, this brief, you know, like a framework. When you write your business plan, the template, typically you need to have your executive <coughs> summary, and you need to have your business industry overview, and you need to have your business 
the market analysis and competition, who are your competitors, right? And then uh, your sales, what I'm focused on is more like a for-profit, so it's a little bit different from Sue's non-for-profit. Non and your sales and marketing plan, because you eventually, um, you need to make money. And your business plan basically is to impress or convince your investors, say, hey, I have a great business idea, and here's my plan, and please invest me, and here is what I am going to do to make your money, your investment worthwhile, and you get your return. So investors always look for, okay, I give you money. I give you a, f a half million or $50,000 even. I want to see what is my return. And then obviously, you know, those aspects would basically would be a, would be the typical investors would look at, all right? Um, actually, you know, those of them, what I'm focused on, just want to, I mean, for all the details you can search online, definitely you can get a lot of uh, help online. But I just want to emphasize two aspects, the market analysis and competition and the sales and marketing plan. Those, those typically are pretty difficult because, you know, executive summary is after you finish them all, you go back to write your executive summary. And other things, you pretty much can self-control. But the two, three and four, are more difficult than others. Um, when you do your market analysis and competition, you need to define your target market for your products or services, all right? In your particular area, you know, either in this Maryland area or nationwide <coughs> or global. So that was the first thing you need to do. And you need to describe the needs for your products or services. Like for instance, the, uh, uh, you said this uh, culture, culture thing, right? The culture awareness. You need to see why, why your products uh, is needed by the market or by the community. And uh, this, then next one, you need to estimate your overall size of the market, your units of your products and service that target market could buy, right? And uh, your potential, you know, the business, how big your market would be. So this one you need to say. And then you need to uh, estimate the volume and the, uh, the volume values of your sales with your competitors. Because you need to see who are your competitors and how big they are. And as well as, you know, what's your pro and cons? Why, I mean, you say, okay, my function is better than my competitor, A, B, C. Or my cost is cheaper than other things, you know, other competitors. Something you need to say, you know, I'm unique. I mean, unique, I'm better. Or at least, you know, when maybe I, I'm um, somehow have my own uniqueness compared to stand out from your competitors. And also, so like this one, typically you would have something like, you know, this is my business, the business, your, there's your business, and this is my competitor A and B, and what are their revenues, how many employees, and their price for their products, and the quantity, something like this. You need to have a chart to show the comparison. So this definitely will be in your business plan. All right, so you know your competitors. And your sales and marketing plan, those are very difficult, because oftentimes you have a great idea, but if you cannot sell, you cannot make money, this is not a great business, all right? So this, you oftentimes will uh, put lots of efforts into this area, your sales and marketing plan. Definitely you need to describe your products and how it benefits your your customers and your price strategy. You know, you want to offer high level, high target, all depends on your uh, customers. Something you probably, your strategy is okay, I'm going to sell something cheap. So that's, that's this level, this level, this group of uh, customers are what I'm focusing. So you need to have your price strategy and how to sell and where's your distribution channel. That's something you need to consider as well. And then lastly, you know, how you're going to advertise and promote your products, and what are the most because you know all, what are the most um, effective way for your products being heard by the uh, general market, and of of course you know you said a TV will be the great place, uh, internet, but those are all come with the cost. 
So you need to have uh, some sort of uh, comparisons, you know, like your budget, see how much money you have for your sales and uh, for your advertisement and promotion. So those are the, uh, you know, the sales and marketing plan you need to have in your mind in building your business plan. Um, so, you know, that pretty much finished my part one. Part two is, uh, I'm just want to give you the business formation for especially, you know, for those first of you, you know, first time thinking about doing business, you probably don't have, uh, probably not get to the point why I need to form a business. But just no matter how great your business idea is, you need uh, a body, you need uh, a container to carry need a, your business idea. So that's why we need to have, uh, you know, a business being formed. Because otherwise, if you want to go uh, ask people to invest your money, your parents, your friends, they said, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you 50 bucks or $100 to start. But you said, okay, if uh, you go to a Gates Foundation, say, I need, uh, I need half a million. Then Gates Foundation is where the money get to you, where to give to. So they, they're not saying, okay, I'll give money to you personally. They want to see a legal organization and you have a whole set of things to make your business um, legitimate. So that's why we need to think about your business formation. And typically, when you think about the business formation, you need to think about your name and potential trademark. So that's, I'll talk about this. It's a very uh, serious issue, so you need to think about. And then you register your business and where to register, which state, and how to choose a, a structure. You know, C corporation, LLC, what's your pro and what con, why people, why oftentimes you hear, okay, so many companies are incorporating Delaware. Why Delaware? You probably often quiz, you know, like uh, curious about that. Well, I'll give you an explanation later. Name, and never underestimate your business name, all right? Name, first of all, when you have a business ideas, you need to get a cool name. A cool name means, okay, you need uh, something, think, think about this, Apple. And right now, everybody knows Apple. Apple is such a, such a big name, right? The name, but before this Apple, Steve Jobs Apple, guess what, who has been used Apple as well? There was an Apple core, and that was originally, Beatle used it for their music industry. In the music services. The Beatles first was the music company called Apple Core. Then eight years later, Stephen Jobs introduced the Apple Inc. to the world. So these two mega company, they have a battles over the court over the years. All right, just because the name after the first round, Apple Inc. That's Stephen Jobs. Inc. agreed to pay Apple Core a cash settlement to stay out of a music business. And then, but with the uh, whatever, the later on the iTunes thing, the legal wrangling between these two companies continued and hit it again. So eventually they reached, they reached uh, another settlement after Apple Inc. agreed to buy Apple Core trademark, trademark rights and license them back to the music company. So you can see name is very important and never understand, you say, okay, because I'm small, but who knows, maybe, uh, in two years, five years, you become the next Apple. And uh, if you are not careful enough, your name, you never know. Your name probably somebody else has already been used it. So the best way I can suggest, you know, whenever you come with a great name, a cool name, internet search. See who has been using that name, okay? The name basically, you know, um, US uh, Patent Trade Organization, the office, uh, US PT, PTO, they basically have the policy set like first use, not just first registered. So in other words, they probably have been used, but they have not registered as a trademark. You need to be careful about that. They said, okay, I have been using this. Even I have not registered a trademark, you cannot use. You have to stay away from me. Otherwise, there's uh, a trademark, there are IP infringement case will go, go after you if you're getting big. Okay, if you're getting bigger. So be careful of that and go search internet. And the, uh, the fundamental principle is similar name in your industry. That's a two key issue. 
I mean, if we find somebody use the same thing, but it's different industry, don't worry about that. But again, you know, if you really care about, especially once you're getting certain size, you need to check U.S. trademark, U.S. patent and trademark office. Because otherwise, later on, once you've been successful, that things will come back and bite you. All right? <coughs> so this is the name. Next one is uh, you need a registered company, right? Registered company, normally, you need to check with your state. State website normally would have uh, uh, lots of uh, useful information on how to register a company. And once you register a company, then you can, I mean, registration, the, state, the corporation registration normally will be done at the state level. <coughs> like for instance, in Maryland, if you are running a business in Maryland, just the register um, a business with, major, with Maryland, it's pretty simple, just like one piece of paper. Um, filled out the basic information, your name, and the company's name, and location, and your business and submit it, fax it, probably like $350. So I, I can't remember how much that you get your company registered. I mean, obviously you can choose Delaware. I'll talk about Delaware later. Um, so once you form your, form your company, next thing is you need to uh, go to an IRS website to file a form SS4 to get your EIN number. The EIN is an employer identification number, just like our social security number. Each each business needs to have their ID. And this is a very important ID, because when you file your tax returns, you need to put this number. Just like when you file your personal tax returns, you need to put your social security number into it. So this one, and this can be easily done, and you can send a paper, fax, or mail, or maybe you can just do it online. Immediately you get your number. Why do you need this EIN number? You, know, you need to have a business name. You're registered and you have your EIN number. Then you can open a bank account. Because you need a bank account for your business. Because otherwise, uh, why, you know, people, if they decided to give you money, where did their money go? You cannot put your uh, own ticket in <laughs> your container, right? So, that, so that's, that's normally you need for open a bank account. The next one is uh, check with your state for other registration, license, and permits, all depends on what kind of business you're, you're getting into it. If you're a bioscience, I don't know, your state probably have some special uh, treatment, I mean, like requirements. If you are running a, a business, like, like a restaurant, you want to sell liquor, you need to have a special license or permits for that. So that, for your particular business, you need to go back to your state and check any particular permits and license require, are required. Now I'm talking about the Delaware. Why you often hear you know, so many companies being formed in Delaware? In Delaware, the reason Delaware is such a popular place is just Delaware court system is well established and highly respected, and they're so business oriented. So they offer lots of flexibility in structure your corporation, and uh, they, they, they offer you know, greater uh, privacies. The uh, Delaware law basically is in favor for the uh, corporation in the later stage in particular, if you want to go IPO. And the law is very straightforward, much easier to compliance. All right, and oftentimes investors prefer a Delaware, corp a Delaware, uh, Delaware form of the uh, company. And later, you know, just because of Delaware, uh, has a such an uh, advantage. A lot of states follow Delaware, they change their corporate law. So Delaware, some of their uh, advantage, normally people would like, some other states offer as well. So you, you know, check your local state and also compare with Delaware law, see which one, you know, you want to do, uh, register your company. It doesn't matter, you don't need to be physically in Delaware, you can register a company in Delaware. However, because you are not physically in Delaware, you need to uh, engage a registration agent. That's an extra cost. That work extra cost. So that's the cons. If your business is not located in Delaware, you need to have uh, and pay uh, annual franchise tax and also you know, your agent. That's an extra cost for that. So that's the uh, Delaware. Next one is uh, the form of your business. 
you often get confused to say, okay, there's a corporation, a limited corporation, there's an ink, and you see some company with an LLC. You say, what's that? What are the uh, differences? Why, you know, we need to consider about this. Typically, corporation, because normally you, in U.S., in the United States, the structure for corporations, you mean a business organization are just a C corporation and another group just like a pass-through entities. Pass-through entities include include LLC, LLP, LP, so a lot of, uh, lot of you know, the pro and accounts. But in general, these are the things we normally keep in mind when you form LLC or Inc. And both entities are shared personal assets from business liability, which is very important because you don't want your business didn't go through and liabilities will go after you personally. So that's something you need to keep in mind. That's why we want to have a business legal entity separate from your personal. And uh, you know that's the second one, requires separation of business and personal finance. Then uh, those entities, the most of states, you can register and form with most of the states in the United States. And then you know in terms of the uh, Pro-end accounts, you know, the, the first three you can see they're pretty much the same. But once you start with this highly flexible management structure, um, LLC has a pretty the more flexibility than corporation. Then uh, tax, tax reporting operation, LLC, that's another thing you need to keep in mind. LLC only have a one level tax, and corporation you have two levels. Corporation at a corporate level, you need to pay tax, and when you're corporation make profit, you need to distribute to your investors, to your shareholders. That's the part that called a dividend, and you need to pay another layer of tax. So that's that's why you know the C corporation often time you don't you don't you know the, for tax purposes there's not a very uh, advantages compared with LLC. However however if your company eventually I become you know a candidate for IPO and for uh, outside the larger investors they want to go to a C corporation because you know the corporate law is much more clear and uh, it's easier to go IPO underwriting is much easier and normally you don't see LLC go public all right um, however you know when you're small I would suggest you started with LLC and you can convert to C corporation in the future. So that, you know, if you have uh, incurred costs or loss during the earlier, earlier stage, you can get your business deduction, you know, loss deduction. So this is, uh, this is from legal, from corporate law perspective, that's the differences. Um, I know some of you probably, it's the first time, and especially the high school, Students, I know it's kind of boring, but just keep that in your mind. You know, when your business is getting bigger, you never know, okay? At least you have this basic idea here. So, oh, okay, that time in Green Core Building, Nina mentioned, okay, the corporate structure, at least when somebody push it to you, you know what they're talking about. They were, when they ask you, you're just like, you won't be uh, totally clueless, all right? So that's what I said, you know, the previous slides was talking about uh, a corporate law perspective. This is more from the tax consideration. What's the difference between C corporation and LLC or S corporation? You probably just heard about this. I'm, you know, all those things I basically took like my uh, whole semester in NYU law school talking about the differences. So here I'm just giving you like, a, you know, a key idea you can explore and uh, get more get more information about that. You know, something like this, very, very straightforward, just keep that in mind. C Corporation has a two-level tax. Pass-through entity is only one-level tax, all right? Just from tax perspective, C Corporation is, uh, I mean, LLC pass-through is better. But there's other aspects you need to consider. So it's a disbalance and eventually choose your, the proper, uh, tax, I mean the uh, corporate structure. And you know, once you have your name, you have your uh, um, corporate corporation, your organization set it up. Next one is uh, very important. You need to say 
Where's my money come from? I need investors, right? How my financial operation will be? So your financial operation typically will have your capital planning stage, and you have a financial operation and also your financial statements, right? Those are um, your investors will see and uh, yourself needs to be on top of. It. What what is your capital planning stage? Probably a lot of people will see this chart before already. Um, all depends on the stage of your business. Like if we're just start, we just start and we don't have revenue, we only just have a, have idea. This time, who will be your investor, right? You will see your angels. Who are your angels? Your parents and your relatives, right? So these are at seed capital in this area. And obviously, the value of that means, you know, as soon as she, the first um, entrepreneur, the first time, 70% of them will fail. And so, won't be surprised if your business did not go through. Just try again. It's no big deal, right? Just try again. So, at this stage, you will look for angels, your family, friends. And once you get to a break even point over here, right? you will see, move to a earlier stage, then VCs, venture capitals will come in, and then uh, some other large company maybe will acquire you or merge with you, then you may find a strategic alliance. So those are getting to uh, this stage. And uh, once you're getting a, a more, you know, deep in your business and your revenue keep this one is show your revenue, right? Your revenue keep going up at this stage. You will have a continuing basis, merge acquisition, strategic alliance, and you may get a monthly loan. I don't know if you are aware of this monthly loan. Monthly loan is a loan, you know, bank loan, and sometimes are. Um, Outside of the bank, other private investors, they may lend a loan to you. Instead of, you know, the uh, investment is an equity investment and the debt investment, right? Equity investors basically become your shareholder. And debt investors basically just your, uh, um, how do you say, your debtor, your creditor, I'm sorry, your creditor. Creditor always get paid first than equity investors. And when, but, you know, normally for creditors, they lend money to you. They, they have a fixed income. They do not enjoy your, how to say that, uh, upwards potentials. So they said, okay, I'll lend money to you. I need 8% uh, annual interest back. That's all. And if your business go, you know, return like 20%, I only keep my 8%. The rest, you, you keep it, you know, as equity investors will enjoy. Um, so the debts, that's investors, they're the higher priorities than the, uh, than the equity investors. And oftentimes when they lend money to you, they want a collateral. Just like you know, you go to bank and you borrow. They need something to secure their lending. And the collaterals can be all type of collaterals. Like when you buy a house, like for instance, you, know, you go to the bank and get a mortgage, your house will be collateral. Uh, here, monthly, monthly lenders, are using your ownership, your ownership uh, shares, your company's shares as a collateral. So in, that, in other words, if for the eight percent in at year end you didn't get me uh, the eight percent back, and I can, you know, convert my debts into <coughs> your shares, become your shareholder. Those are basically last resort for the debt investors. They don't want to take your share, but just in case, so you can become a shareholder. Okay, so that's a monthly loan. And then here, ta -ta, you get your IPO. Then you become rich. So, so that's, uh, that's all the entrepreneurs wanted to get here. Once you get IPO, then once you IPO, so you become, a, a, you know, your stock being treated as a, the public trade. You know, the platform, and just like all the regular public trade company, your stock will be treated as secondary market. So this pretty much illustrates your capital needs.
from very beginning conception all the way to be very successful and going forward, okay? So this is your capital planning thing, so you know where you are and who you're supposed to look for, for money, all right? The next one, you know, last slide I'm talking about the capital, and this one is uh, for your normal financial operation. What do you need to do? You have a money in, once anybody gives you money, you have to keep track how your money being spent, all right? So typically when the financial operation, operation includes two parts. One is bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, you could have uh, a receipts, you know, you use the cash, you pay something, then you got your receipts, and some people just keep your receipts in the, the shoe boxes, right? And the whole bunch of, but I would suggest, you know, you need to keep, at least from the beginning, you need to keep an Excel spreadsheet, all right? To say, okay, I get money today, and uh, tomorrow I'm buying supplies and paying vendors. Keep your money in and money out. So you need to have a, a bookkeeping. Bookkeeping, accurate bookkeeping. Bookkeeping itself is not enough, because bookkeeping, you only have Excel spreadsheet in and out, but it's not a financial report. And investors, they want to see your financial reports. Financial reports become a, a pretty uh, a detail, and only professionals can help you do that. So once you get into, a, you need to do a financial reports, accounting parts, you may need uh, a CPA or somebody else you know, with a financial background to help you on that. See, this is what normally bookkeeping, bookkeeping, you all can do it in-house. You just basically, you know, your gross receipts, your purchases, expenses, assets, and uh, if you have employee, your employee taxes. Just in and out, in and out. Just keep accurate records as much. And when you give that to your CPAs, that's how they can make the financial report based on your bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. This one, I need uh, just have to, you know, after you have all these bookkeepings, your CPA come over, prepare a financial reports for you, the financial statements. Financial statements, again, I know my staff is pretty dry <laughs> and uh, put everybody into sleep, but you need to know this Definitely for every successful business, you have to know this. This is a part of the financial, like accounting. Other people don't like accounting, they say, oh, it's accountant, uh, just number crunching. But don't never, you know, underestimate accounting. Accounting is a business language. When you are looking at every business, Wall Street, like, you know, financial reports, quarterly, annually, you can't see something, I'm performing great, you know, I'm financially strong. Something like that. People all need to look at a detail, numbers. Okay, how, what kind of numbers, financial reports. All those data, you know, those statements came from your accurate bookkeep, bookkeeping. That there's a bunch of uh, accounting treatment to eventually to get into a full statements. Income statements, balance sheet, a statement for shareholder equity and cash flow statements. So these four financial, financial charts are basically every business needed. And your investors definitely will look at, look at this. Okay, when they give your money, you probably, well, at, you know, like your, uh, the face, first page, first stage, your parents, parents, uh, um, Friends give you money, they probably don't look at this because they love you and they have a faith in you, just do it. But once you get into a, a series, once the uh, institution investors in it, they definitely will look at this. Um, income statement, I will just give you a general idea, you know what those statements for. And uh, obviously, if you really want to know the details, you have to take accounting classes. And this is my uh, suggestion. You do not need to be an accountant, you know, a CPA, but every successful business owner, they are definitely know how to, re how to read their financial statements, all right? So income statement, look at this. Income statement basically is, uh, is reflect the operation of your business for a period of time. And oftentimes you will say, okay, 
for the year end, December 31st, 2015. That means from January 1st to December 31st, 2015. This is the company I operate, and there's how much money I, win, I gain. Okay, what's my revenue, what is my expenses, and what is my net income? Then of course, you know, tax, whatever, after this. All right, so this is uh, my, that period of time, my operation, how healthy, how good I operate. Balance sheet, balance sheet is a snapshot of any given moment. Any given moment to just say, hey, as of December 31st, how much money I have? What is my total net worth of the company? How much my uh, liability still in, like liability means, you know, Balance sheet basically has uh, asset section, liability section, and uh, your owner, shareholders, equity section. All right? So when the people look at your balance sheet, they say, oh, we know how big your company is. Okay? And how much equity you already have, and how big your liability are. So that, from this one, we'll see um, a snapshot in that given moment to your situation of the uh, company. And this section basically is equity, the owner's equity section will record who provide money to you, how much, and over the year, this section retained earning basically reported uh, accumulatively how much gain or income you generate from your operation. So this will be a retained earnings section. Add together is your owner's equity section. This one is uh, important for a shareholder as well. They said, hey, my money, I put it in. How much my net worth, my investment worth, just in this section. And cash flow statement, basically, it just basically cash, right? How much cash in, cash out. The difference of cash flow compared with uh, the previous uh, Income statement is sometimes certain expense are not cash yet. For instance, you buy a, a table, right? You spend $500 in your table, and you probably will say, okay, my cash out is $500. But does that mean your expense is $500? It's not, because your table is still there. Expense means you already, you know, expense out. So instead, the cat, you know, if you have a $500 out, you will have a depreciation keep, keep tracking. That's part of your expense, all right? So it's very important to look at your cash flow statement to see how much cash you have and how much more cash is very, uh, very uh, essential when you just start business. You need to see, do I have sufficient cash to run my next phase of the uh, operation? So that is uh, the four, those are the four statements every business has to have, all right? Probably not now, but going forward, if you get serious, you definitely have. The next one is uh, business management. Business management is more for, um, how should we say it? Build your own team, your human resource management, your employee benefits. The reason I specifically point these three items because every successful business are come from a successful team. And uh, employee and your business partners are the key um, assets to your company. Without talent, good people work together, you will be able to make your business successful. So building your own team and HR management and uh, to retain talents, you need to keep thinking about your business, you know, employee benefits. Again, this one probably is too early for, for most of us standing here. But going forward, those are something you need to keep in your mind and you need to build into your a business plan, right? That's a typical startup company. I mean, typical companies you would think about. What kind of functions and what kind of pe people you need build in your team, right? Ideally, you want to have uh, more people take, you know, handle different skills, you mean, with different skills, 
and they handle different functions. Like, you know, you got a CEO and a cop. CEO, everybody knows, the head of the company. And the CEO, you know, chief operating officer. Then you had a CTO, the product officer. A CMO, CMO is recent, you know. When I just started my career, we don't have a CMO. That kind of position. Nowadays, a lot of people, a lot of companies have the CMO, just the chief marketing officer. CFO, of course, is very important. You know, managing your uh, financial statement. Then there's a CSO, the chief sales officer, which, you know, that's, that's normally people say, okay, this is a startup company, symmetry, you need to have those functions. Uh, those people are taking different functions. However, you said I don't have that many people. You know, but those functions, you know, you don't have that many people, no, no problem. Then you have to wear multiple hats. Okay, the CMO and the CSO, like the marketing and the sales, will be one person handle. And the CFO, CEO, or chief financial officer, and chief operating officer, can be handled by one person. And products, if you have high tech products, the CTO has to be held, you know, by someone. Let's see you on the top. Uh, or maybe just one or two person, uh, small shop, then you have to take all the functions. You can keep as many hats as you, <laughs> you like to have. But all the hats just represent a different function of the company. All right, just keep that in mind. So that was uh, build your team. Human resource management. Once you get in a certain stage, if you have an employee, you need to think about how to manage your employee. Because the employee, not just employee management, you have uh, payroll issues. You know, every, every paycheck time. And there's, if you're working in the U.S. corporation, you know the payroll services. It's quite complicated. You know, uh, federal will take some withholding taxes. State will take some withholding tax. When you're working for a large corporation, because you know, I used to work for the uh, large corporation, like IBM, so I never care about my paycheck, who is handling that. Once I'm working for Lucky Martin, I mean for uh, Green Court, I started you know, building the whole team from scratch, and I have to deal with all kinds of uh, issues, including those uh, payroll services. And typically, you know, in the market right now, ADP, ADP paycheck and uh, the QuickBook, those are Square, they're providing payroll services. When you just started, if you need to hire an employee, you can check with your bank. Your bank oftentimes can handle small pieces, you know, like you know, less people, I don't know, like five, I, think, I don't know how much they can, but definitely check your bank. Your bank oftentimes can provide your payroll service solution. Yeah, payroll services handle the each pay period, or all, all kinds of uh, very complicated issues. So that's the payroll services. Then once you're getting even bigger, you need to think about to offer the benefits for your employees. We had, uh, we checked a, um, a survey. That's the top five benefits, in addition to salary payment, okay? Salary payment, those are the top, top five benefits regulated by employee means, you know, employees care more. House insurance, vacation payoff, performance bonus, paid sick day, and 401k. So those are, as a business owner, if you want to retain a tenants, this is something you need to, need to consider as well going forward once you're, again, I'm just not talking about a startup. Once you get into a, a point, you know, you need, uh, you need to offer those benefits plan. So that's something you need to consider. So this is uh, for employee benefits. And uh, there's a great, you know, like a US Small Business Administration the website has a lot of useful information you can search and to help you, right? And so what I'm giving to you today, is just like a very overview, maybe my uh, three year school learnings I put in the one hour and <laughs> keep you the very highlight and you know where to go and to find information. At least, you know, keep that, those aspects in your mind when you run your business, all right? So this is about my exam, you know, my presentation and uh, my email address and 
when you have, uh, you know, contact me when you have uh, questions. I'll be happy to to provide, uh, you know, share my experience with you. All right, great. That's it.